What's going on, world? I'm Wesley from A Connection TV, the network. Mm, excuse me, I love these freaking things. If you ever get me angry, get me some side patches, especially the big side. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Like this video if you like candy like me. Like this video if you don't care about what people say if you eat a lot of candy and you still eat it. Actually, I really don't. I don't eat a lot of candy. I just eat airheads. I love airheads. And Sour Patches, I love Sour Patches. Snicker Bars, Nestle Crunch, Kit Kats. Yeah, I eat candy. Anyways, like this video. What's going on, y'all? I hope y'all had a fantabulous weekend. My weekend was pretty cool, pretty sociable. I went to Secrets on Saturday. Y'all know that's my spot. And this particular, for some particular reason, this Saturday at Secrets was off the freaking chain. Okay, off the freaking chain. Um, D Woods was there. Ain't nobody really checking for D Woods. I don't know why D Woods did not join Danny Kane. I don't know if the girls didn't want her to be a part of Danny Kane. I don't know if she didn't want to be a part of Danny Kane. I don't know what's going on. But the smart thing for her to would have been for her to join back with the girls because I don't know if y'all follow me on Instagram, follow me on A Connection TV, A Connection TV on Instagram. I posted up the um, performance and then I took it down. I took it down because. I like it, it only got like two likes or some shit like I, I ain't nobody checking for D Woods and I mean I hope I wish her the best I want her to be successful but nobody's checking for her it's like you should know when people are checking for you and when they're not and when to stop and when to keep going like oh <coughs> excuse me <coughs> or you should know when to like upgrade yourself and elevate yourself you know what I'm saying but anyways this is not a, a bashing type of video. I had an amazing time at Secrets. Everybody was telling me that I gained weight because last year I used to be like this and now I'm like this. So everybody was telling me, oh my God, you gained weight, what are you doing? Are you taking anything? Are you taking any supplements or whatever? And I'm like, no, I'm not taking any supplements because no matter how many videos that I see or how many self-help gurus tell me I should do this or I should do that, I don't know, I just don't like putting things into my body except for food, you know what I'm saying? So, pills and drugs and all of that stuff, I don't like putting it, in, put it into my body. It, it, it disturbs my mind because the human body was created to protect itself. So, to just put in all these different chemicals and stuff, and I don't know, it just, I don't know, anyways. But I had an amazing time. So shout out to everybody that went to Secrets on Saturday. Shout out to Bryce uh, for throwing a phenomenal party. Um, my Halloween party was all right. It was, it was cool. Shout out to everybody that came. Shout out to the people that said that they were going to come and didn't. Still y'all, still love y'all, kind of. But um, I had, this week, this week was pretty good. It was pretty good. It was leading, it was really leading up to becoming like a very depressing kind of week leading into the weekend. But this weekend, I just, you know, 10%, 90%. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. I always have to keep telling myself that because I find myself going down and out sometimes. But anyways, enough about that. I had an amazing weekend. Now on to freaking Real Housewives of Atlanta, season six, episode one. Listen. <laughs> Listen. Listen, this season is going to be the best season by far. And the reason why I say that is because I stopped watching Real Housewives of Atlanta, like, really, like, season three. I stopped watching it, fell off on it. That's when I was doing the Mona Simone reviews on Real House, and I was really into it. But then I just fell off. You know, whole, the whole... Um, Kim, it was just, it, the storyline was just becoming too much. And then I really took it, I really disliked Nene as she was elevating and finding her way to the top. I was liking her less and less and less and less because she just changed to me. And it didn't seem like she changed for the better. I started watching it a little bit back in season five. I started to pick up watching it again back when season five was airing because, I don't know, Candy, Candy really made me really want to watch it more when she came on board and you know i saw so i'm like okay maybe we're starting to get you know real we're bringing the reality back to reality television and you know really for uh real housewives of atlanta so i started to watch back season five now we get to season six nini is established okay she's a rich bitch she's established okay 
Candy is established. Phaedra has her family going on. Cynthia has her agencies. And she's, you know, doing all right with Peter. And, you know, they brought Kenya Moore on. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. No, I'm not checking for Kenya. Whatever. And I like seeing Lawrence and Derek J more. Like, I like seeing them on TV more. So, you know, okay, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Let's get into it. So, the season trailer... The season trailer, like, I, <laughs> I am so invested in these chicks now, it is ridiculous, because this opening trailer to the season is, is it looks freaking awesome. I want to know what's going on with Portia, okay? I feel so, I feel so bad for Portia, and this punk motherfucker Cordell. The way he talks to her and the way he treats her, he's a bitch. And, and I, there's no other way to say it, but he's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one should ever have to be, no, no, in no relationship, whether it's a female, male, 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 whatever, no kind of fucking relationship should somebody tell you where to go, what you're going to do, when you need to come in the house, what's going on. No, like, who, where they do that at? You know what I'm saying? And in today's world, why do women allow themselves to deal with that? Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I, I really, in the beginning of season five, I love the relationship. But then towards the end when Cordell showed his ass, I'm like, fuck him, Portia. Fuck him. You know what I'm saying? So I want to know how she, um, you know, gets her groove back. You know, Portia gets her groove back. I want to know what happens between Nene and Kenya. There's a lot of anger management issues going on between those two. And I want to know, everybody wants to know, what is, who is Candy talking about? Who is she going to murk up in this bitch? I want to know who she's talking about. This, oh my God. We start off this episode. I'm sorry for the long ass intro. We start off this episode with Nene opening up her gifts. <laughs> Lady is so bougie. I love it. She's bougetto. She's bougetto. Bougie and ghetto. She's bougetto. And I love it. She's like, oh, oh, my Hermes plate. Oh my God. This is so, she's such a rich bitch. This is so great. Oh, this is from Tiffany. She just had to name drop where she got all her gifts from and where people got her gifts from. And then Greg was like, can you even eat on that plate? And Nene was like, yeah, but why would you? You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you eat off an... I don't know. That was, I mean, it was like, all right, whatever, Nene. We know that you're established. We know you're bougetto. Okay, let's get over it now. Let's get over it. And the funny thing about it was she kept saying, oh, they're sending me these gifts. I love these gifts. And Greg is like, no. They're sending us the gifts. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, Greg, <laughs> Greg, go sit down somewhere, Greg, go sit down somewhere, go sit down somewhere, because Greg, come on now. <laughs> I don't remember seeing you in any of the Glee episodes or, or in any of the New Normal episodes. So yeah, they're sending her the gifts. No shame, but I'm just saying, I love Greg and I love the fact that Nene and Greg worked out their differences and got back together because I feel like when people get married, they should get married for the long haul. Like, that's the traditional sense of marriage. Nowadays, everybody just gets married just to say, oh, I got married, look at my ring. Fuck that. If you're going to get married to somebody, make sure that you're in love with them. Make sure that you don't care that they fart in the bed right next to you. Make sure that if they're sick and they could not walk, you'd help them go to the bathroom and take that dump and you and you'll wipe their ass. Make sure that you feel that kind of love. Because if you don't feel that kind of love for somebody, like you'll clean their nose if they can't use their hands to clean their nose, then you don't need to fucking be marrying them. You don't need to be fucking marrying that person if you feel that you cannot wipe their ass. And not with the wet wax. With some, with some cheap ass cotton nail tissues. Y'all run out of tissues. Y'all ain't got no more in the house. And you only got two single sheets on your motherfucking head. Are you gonna wipe that bitch's ass? If the answer is no, your ass don't need to get married to that motherfucker. You just don't. You know what I'm saying? And I feel, I'm just saying, I feel like Nene and Greg got that kind of marriage. Because Nene was not a looker back in her early day. And Greg, 
So, they love each other, goddammit. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Nene, though, because Nene, Nene is looking beat. She is losing weight, and she is looking good. You know what I'm saying? Nene, I am so happy for Nene. Like, I really genuinely, wholeheartedly happy for Nene and her newfound success. Not new, but where she is right now. I just hope that she's saving those ducats for the motherfucking bucket because when all these shows get canceled, I hope that she don't be like Kenya Moore and get evicted. That's what I'm saying. So, Nene, be a rich, smart bitch and keep that money in check. Chill. Todd and Candy. Speaking of some candy. Todd and Candy. I like what they got going on. Todd seemed like a real down home type of brother. Yes, he really does. He seems like a really down home, down south home, southern type of brother. So I'm feeling Todd. I feel everything that he brought to the table last season. And now that him and Candy are in the same place together, I think that's hot. But from a third party's perspective, looking into this situation, it seems like Ty is reaping mad benefits. Candy is well off. Like, Candy is well off. Hold on one second. Apparently, Candy is worth $35 million. Apparently. Y'all just saw me look it up. So, Candy is doing the damn thing. She got candy coated nights. She got those sex toys going on. She got, uh, she, she got, she wrote no scrubs, okay? So she stay collecting royalty checks. Candy is a rich bitch, okay? In the scene between Todd and Candy, you see like this nice like couple that are newly engaged and you know, they, you see him patting her on the butt, and she's cooking breakfast, and all of that stuff. Like, you see it, it's looking kind of cute. You know what I'm saying? Then they hit, like, Todd and, and, and Candy start talking about Portia and divorce, and she's like, oh, I feel bad for her, blah, blah, blah. And then this dude, Todd's like, well, y'all the reason why she's getting a divorce. And when I thought about it, you know, I was thinking about it when I was watching season five. I'm like, these girls, these girls are really, like, they're, all of these women are independent. Portia is not on that independent level. Like, she was so codependent or Cordell and waiting on him hand and foot, it was a little bit ridiculous. And sad at the same time. At the end of the day, if it works for them and she's okay with it, fine. I have nothing to say about it. But the girls, being strong black women that they were, had something to say about it. And when I was watching the season five, I was like, wow, they're really like, they're gonna warp her mind. You know what I'm saying? She's new to the show. She already knows these girls are established on the show. They're gonna warp her mind and have her change her mindset when it comes to her relationship with Cordell. And I feel that that's kind of like what happened. But at the end of the day, who ended up with the divorce? Doing the divorce on fucking Twitter. You had the nerve to, like, I just don't. As, as, Portia, as Portia divulges her story on, on, on TV and for the world to see, I cannot help but not be surprised at sh her coming out saying that he's possibly gay. Like, here's, here's my whole take out on the whole <laughs> I got gay teased from Cordell in season five. I really did. When he had that argument with homeboy um, from, I think it was from Kenya's camp. When he was arguing with homeboy, I already felt that there was gay teens there. Because there's no, like, I've not seen any regular, typical, straight dude, whatever, that's gonna sit there and argue with another man over some petty shit. I, like, you got petty, like, nigga, you owe me fit five bucks with my five bucks, I'm beat your ass and put it on World Star. World Star, you got that petty. But these are grown men. So that's not that's not the caliber of a man that I would think would, would uh, I would associate with Peter, Apollo, Cordell, like right. You know what I'm saying? Like so Todd, they ain't got time for that. Greg, they ain't got time for that. Like, anyways, so 
all all this episode, she's hinting at possible reasons as to why that the divorce could have happened. And for him to put the post this shit up on Twitter or for her to find out about it on Twitter, that's some gay shit. I'm sorry, that's some gay lame late shit. You know what I'm saying? That's some, all right, bitch, I'm done with your trifling ass. You done, you done showed me out and read me for filth on motherfucking season five, bitch. I got you, bitch. That's some petty shit to me. You know what I'm saying? And I felt bad for her when she uh, was talking to the lawyer because she still wants to make it work. She still wants to make it work. You know what I'm saying? Mind you, with the post-confessionals, we see that she's over the shit, but after watching the season, she wants to write down a list. And I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck you gonna put on this list that you already haven't spoken about to him already? Like, a list? Like, are you serious? But I respect her because... In, in the traditional sense of marriage, you want this shit to work through thick and thin, through sickness and health, till death do y'all part. We staying together, bitch. We staying together. You ain't leaving my ass. I don't care if it's for an anus, a dick, or whatever you trying to do on the side, you not leaving my ass. And I respect Portia, I do. I respect her wholeheartedly. So I really wanna know what is gonna happen with this particular story, like I really wanna know. Then we get to then we get to um, Phaedra. Not too much to say about Phaedra and her president and the prince, okay? Phaedra, I love you. When you came on to the season, I was riding or die for Phaedra. And she was getting caught out in those damn lies, girl. And they played you again this first episode. The editors played you again with your lying ass talking about, oh, I welcomed my, the president into this world with open arms. And then she gonna say, oh, child, what's wrong with your feet? What's wrong with your hands? Something, something, Michael Jackson. Then she was like, uh, the prince welcomed the president into this world. And when we saw uh, Aaron, he was like, no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be bothered with him, I don't wanna. So, I still love Phaedra and her lying ass. I really do, because when she get caught in a lie, she get caught in a lie. But Phaedra, Phaedra keeps it, it's weird because we know she a lying ass, but Phaedra keeps it real. I don't know how that works, Wes. I don't know. But she does. And we still love her. Which is the reason why she's still on this show. Apollo's sexy ass is doing construction on the house. I'm like, please do not be like, uh, what the fuck was her name? In the damn castle that was unfinished. Oh, fuck. <laughs> please do not be like her. Okay? I can't remember her name. God damn, that's terrible. Um, but do, don't, you know, don't, don't be like her. You know, Phaedra's walking around the house, barking demands, and I'm like, I don't see how Apollo hitting that and getting another baby out of that. I really don't, because, you know, Apollo was rumored to have gay tees, too, or to be gay tees, but, I, I mean, I just don't, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot to put up with when you're dealing with certain people. Like, certain people have their own ways, and in a relationship, it does take two, and it's a, it's a, it's work. But Phaedra looked like he, she put him through a lot. And I commend Apollo for being able to deal with that shit. I just do. I really do. Moving on along. Moving on along to uh, Portia speaking to her mother and her sister. Now, Portia and her sister look just alike. Like twins. They look like twins to me. Portia's mom looks like she had a lot of work done. But... I, you know who she is? She looks like Tony Braxton and them's mother. Like, I have no disrespect, but she kind of favors the mother of Tony, the Braxtons to me. You know what I'm saying? But I thought that, I don't know, it's just something, something wrong to me about this whole setup. It's like this, the, Portia and the mother is dogging this man out on TV. Just dogging him out. And I don't, I'm, I'm saying I feel bad because in any situation, well, I guess you was a grown-ass motherfucking adult. You know what you're doing when you decide to put your life out on TV for the world to see. I get that. But if it feels like, to me, like Portia is gaining her, her independence and vindicating herself by downing this dude on national TV. And I don't know. I can't really rock with that. Like, I can't really get with that. I don't know. Now, it, I guess it would be different. I've not seen anything where Cordell is completely blasting her out 
saying that, you know, she's really bald or she got cancer or some shit like that. Like, I don't see nothing like that. Mind you, I don't really read the blogs. So I don't know if that's happening. If that's not happening, I think what Portia is doing to vindicate herself is not, it's not, I don't know. It's not respected in my eyes. At the end of the day, she's a hurt woman. She's scorned. She's going through this divorce. She had to find out about it on Twitter. Great. But constantly bashing homeboy and then, and then hinting on national TV that the dude is gay is not cool. Like, it's just not, it's not cool. Moving on along, moving on along past that one. Cynthia, the most beautiful girl on this cast. Cynthia is flawless. Cynthia is a diamond in the sky, okay? Um, Cynthia, I love you. Um, I respect you because you are married to Peter. And the reason why I say that is... <laughs> the reason why I say that is because Peter... Peter don't really look like much. Like, you know what I'm saying? She, Cynthia look like she's 22 and Peter look like he's 65. Actually, he don't, but you know Peter is old, duh, when, when looking at the two. So I respect her for that. She found love. She found love, and I don't know where she found her love at, in a hopeless place. But um, I love that Cynthia came into her own throughout the seasons as well. You know, she got the Bailey Agency. The Bailey Agency is doing well, well enough for them to expand and relocate across the street. In a warehouse, okay, in a studio, something studios, warehouse, that Peter bought with their money, but didn't tell her that he was buying the property. And she didn't find out that the property was bought until a month fucking after. Like, shit like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. If I'm with your ass and we in a relationship and we got joint accounts, I need to know where my money is fucking going. I do. I need to know where my money is motherfuckers going because we're not... No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do... Like, what, what is... Where do you do that at? You know what I'm saying? Like, and she was all, well, you know, I found out about the studio a month after it was bought and I just felt that I should have been told. Okay, well, we... I didn't see that you cared. Like, you know what I'm saying? You was just like, oh, it's Peter. Whatever. I'm just like, no, God, that, that would not have been me. <laughs> that would not have been me. But I mean, love is love and you do things and you deal with things when you're in love, I guess. Kenya Moore. I lost respect for Kenya Moore after Walter went on that radio station and said that she arranged for him to come on the show so that they can be together or look like that they were together. I'm sorry. I believe Walter and I, I, the reason why I believe Walter is because I think Kenya Moore is an opportunist and I don't know why she is on the show. She's nobody's fucking housewife. Like, I just don't understand why she's, well, I understand that she's on the show for kicks and ha ha and to be Nene's new punching bag, but the bitch ain't nobody's housewife. So why is she on the show? Oh, she arranged for Walter to, 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 to go along with this shenanigan so that they can in turn get married so that she can continue to be on the fucking show because a production company is not making the money that Nene claimed to have thought that she was getting but was going through this illegal motherfucking eviction. Let's read Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore, you got body for motherfucking days. You are like 55 and you look 22. You are a beautiful woman. Your hair is snatched. But Kenya Moore, you are fucking retarded. I do not understand how, as a black female, you are coming on this show to embarrass yourself constantly, constantly, constantly. Go on with the motherfucking win fabulous. Kenya shows up. At Cynthia's um, uh, old, old Cynthia, Bailey Agency, the old location, to announce to the world that she's back. Bitch, we don't care. We don't care. We do not. Well, I don't care, okay? I, I would rather watch a show solely about Cynthia than Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore brings the ha ha's and the hee he's and the gays go for her, but she's late. She's fucking late. And the reason why I say that is because she fucking arranged for that man to come on up and lie. Like, I don't... Okay. When she comes in, automatically, she wants to talk to Cynthia about Nene. Cynthia! Cynthia has grown the fuck up since this show. She knows 
how to speak her motherfucking mind now. Because last season she had to speak her motherfucking mind. So she know now she is not the one, the two, the three, or the four. She is not that broad. Okay? Kenya going on talking about Nene. Cynthia like, uh-uh, wait, uh-uh, what? No, I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody here for that. That's late. She's like, what, what, uh, Nene, who Nene invites her wedding ain't got nothing to do with me. Nene is not here, so I'm not speaking for her. She told her, she was like, you burned a lot of bridges with these girls, so why are you concerned about people calling you or not calling you and so forth and so on? Kenya going on this whole fucking trip that nobody calls her for her fucking, uh, illegal eviction. Bitch, ain't nobody checking for you. Ain't no, ain't nobody checking for Kenya more. And the reason why I say that is because obviously ain't nobody call you. Kenya get on my nerves. And I used to dislike Nene, but Kenya get on my nerves. I, I see her as a liar. I see her as an opportunist. And I see her as the punching bag for the real broads on the show. So she can still stay on the show. She can stay on the show, but I'm done with her ass. I'm done with her. There's no, like, it's like, and I, and, and to be honest, I would have been like the girls were. So we get, let's get to the, the relocation party for Cynthia's Bailey Agency relocation, the studios. I would have been just like those girls. All those girls were avoiding Kenya. As soon as Kenya waved and stepped into the room with Lawrence, which, by the way, I don't understand how Lawrence even deals with her. I don't get it. Everybody wanted to vacate the premises, okay? Kenya comes into this new Bailey agency. She greets Portia. By the way, like, why the fuck are you even greeting Portia? Why are you even greeting? Why are you even asking Portia about the fucking divorce? When you said at Cynthia's, at, at Cynthia's uh, the Bailey agency, that you don't even check for her. You said that in the post-confessionals, you don't even check for Phaedra and Portia, so why would Cynthia mention them to you? Why the hell would you walk yourself up to Portia and then go ask her about her divorce? Like, you fucking care. You don't care. You don't care. Oh, oh, um, you know, I feel, I, you know, I, I just felt, felt bad for you and about the divorce, I heard about it. Portia's like, yeah, I know, I got your text. Like, bitch, what you trying to do? Like, you trying to get them camera feed. I'm not the one. I'm not that test subject. And Portia was like, you know what? Well, I'm not here to talk about my divorce. I don't want to talk about my divorce. Let's just talk about how fabulous this event is and what's going on with this event. I'm like, come on, I, uh, like, come on. She, Kenya's fake. She's fake. And then... She wants to go find Nene. Because Nene, you know what? I respect Nene in this first episode. I really do. I respect her in this episode. You know, because Nene knew the problem and she didn't want to be bothered by the motherfucking problem. So as soon as she saw uh, going with the wind family to step her ass into the room, she's like, come on, Peter. Show me the place, Peter. I want to see the place. And Peter read her. Peter was like, girl, you just want to try to avoid this bro. But come on, let's go, because I don't want to deal with this shit either. Even Derek J. Derek J was like, come on, girl. Let's let's get out of here, Phaedra. Let's get out of here. Let's not. Can I whisk you away? Let's go follow Nene and Peter. And then Phaedra gets on. Phaedra gets on the motherfucking post-confessional. And she's like, Derek J and his tight pants and his hot shirt whisk me away from this beauty pageant queen on bath salts. I was like, God damn, Phaedra, God damn. <laughs> God damn, girl. God damn, girl. Red hot for motherfucking feel, girl. They split up. Kenya ends up, Cynthia ends up bringing the rest of the girls to go look around the place. And then they run into Phaedra, Peter, Derek J, and Nene. Nene's like, oh, damn. Like, why y'all bring her next to me? She cordially says, hi, how you doing? Mwah, mwah. Hi. And then, right off the rip, Kenya's like, hey, skinny Manny. How have you been? No, Nene goes, how have you been? Kenya's like, well, girl, I've been all right, but, you know, it sucked that none of y'all bitches ain't called me when I was going through my illegal eviction. Nene was like, hold up, wait, hold up. Hold up. Because I was going through some things too, playing in the weather for 425 motherfucking people. Ain't nobody called me. I don't receive, I didn't receive no motherfucking call from you. Did can you try to downplay the whole she tried to downplay the whole the process of making a wet like preparing for a wedding? She's like, well, Nene, please. That was a happy moment in your life. You wasn't going through no dramatics. Nene got her together and was like, bitch, a wedding can be stressful. It can be very, very stressful if you want that shit to go well. And there's a lot of things that can come out of that. Well, whatever, Nene. You were going through a good time and I was going through drama. And I thought that you should have hit me up. Nene was like, wait, uh-uh. 
She was like, I didn't receive a call from you. She was like, matter of fact, I invited you to come to my motherfucking wedding. Your ass didn't come to the goddamn wedding. You know what I'm saying? Child, Nene, Nene told Kenya a new motherfucker go with the wind asshole. Wind was going through her motherfucking asshole. She ripped her new one. When Nene came on a post confessional and was like, I know Kenya ain't getting a victim from her motherfucking place. Not after all these productions that she's done off the, off the, over the world, and not after all these DVDs she's selling. I know this is not the one that's getting evicted from her place. I say, yeah, that's the fuck I'm talking about. Girl, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's right, Nene. Nene read her page over and over and over again. Nene sees the problem and she says, you know what? I gotta go pee. I gotta pee. Kenya starts to follow her. And I'm like, why is Kenya following her? Kenya starts to follow her. And Nene's like, what you want me to pee in your glass? You want me to pee in your glass? I was dying laughing at the whole thing. It was really hilarious. You know, Nene said, ain't no bitch gonna tell me who I can speak to and who I cannot speak to. She said, I don't have a problem with Walter. Walter and Greg get along, so I'm gonna invite Greg. I mean, I'm gonna invite Walter. And then Kenya was like, well, did you invite Cordell? And then that's when Portia heard Cordell's name. She came out, why y'all talking about my situation? What's going on? I just want to know. And then he was like, I don't have a problem with Cordell. Cordell and Portia are getting divorced. I don't have a problem with Cordell. I don't know Cordell like that, but I, when I see him, I say hello. He didn't do anything to me. I was like, you know what, Nene, you are so right. I hate it when people think that because you broke up with someone or because you don't like someone anymore, that that means I don't have to like that person and I don't have to talk to that person. That's not how it should be. That's not how it should be. You know what I'm saying? And I was feeling Nene this whole episode. I just thought it was just hella funny how Kenya was like, you're not going to dismiss me. You're not going to dismiss me. And then Kenya wants to go reach for, uh, pull her hair, or move the hair away from her ear. Nene was like, uh-uh, you're invading my personal space. You're invading my personal space. And she goes to walk off. Then Peter drags her off. And then Kenya tries to stop them. And then Greg gets in the middle. I was like, Kenya, you're doing too much. You are doing too much. You cannot be that high impressed about Walter. You cannot be that high impressed about Walter. After you done, after you done stated that the man was gay, are you serious? Why are you even bothering? Like, you didn't even go to the motherfucking wedding, so why is it even a problem? Like, this girl, this girl, she's not a grown woman. This girl is ridiculous. I don't get her. I really don't get her, and I just, she's lost. She's lost. She's gone with the motherfucking wind. Fabulous. And like Nene said, that shit was so last year. She's like, you need to get a new phrase because that shit is old. That shit is old. Gone with the wind. Fabulous is, was last year. Just like Walter was last year. I love Nene. Nene got Kenya together and said that I'm tired of getting this girl together. Nene, you did that. You did that. Nene, congratulations on your wedding. I heard it was a fabulous wedding. Nene, you are the bomb. Okay. Keep being you, keep doing you, and and, 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 and and just keep being fabulous. I love it. I love Nene. I love Candy. I love Portia. I love Phaedra's lying ass. I love the husbands. They are mad cool. I cannot wait to see the drama that ensues between Todd uh, possibly going with uh, doing something with Candy's friend and the mother getting involved and then somebody going after Candy. It looked like some dude was going after Candy and Todd was in between the dude and Candy. I... This season is by none going to be the best. What I want y'all to do is like this video, share this video, follow me on Facebook and Twitter um, and Instagram at A Connection TV and subscribe to A Connection TV, all of which are free to do. Support a brother because I want to support y'all and keep making videos. But and, and we got to keep adopting the similar connection to spot our differences because y'all might love Kenya more. But I am not feeling that broad. And that's just the end of it. I'm going to be posting up a lot of videos. Please let me know what y'all thought about my In, in My Opinion video. The series is going to expand. Um, I do want to go out on the streets with the, with the questions and ask the people. So um, just show, the, show that video love. Share that video. Tweet that video. Get the views up. And I'll continue to do it. Because I don't, I don't like doing stuff if it's only going to get like 50 views. Like it doesn't make sense to continue doing something. And um, I'm, I'm trying to work on bringing back Connect Tunes and 2v1. And, you know, a lot of the other stuff that I was doing. I tried things out to see if y'all like it. And if y'all bite it, I'll bring it back. Y'all got to bite. Y'all just got to bite, though. 
and then I'll continue to do it. I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for watching. Later.